Uh, let's stay with health because you ever wonder about these energy bracelets that you see athletes wearing or products that advertise titanium benefits to these bracelets. Well, Bloomberg's pharmaceuticals reporter Shannon Pettipes uh, took a look into that us for here. It is this week's stock therapy segment for us. And um, uh, Shannon, you know, I've, I've heard about these energy bracelets, but there, are there really any studies, scientific evidence to back up that they actually increase your energy? Well, actually, Betty, no, there aren't really, and that a lot of this benefit could be in your head. But athletes say they don't care because if they think that products containing titanium or a hologram that can help regulate energy is going to give them the edge, then they're interested in it and they're going to give it a try. And as a result, this has turned into a business of more than $200 million a year in sales of some of these products, like the Fighting necklaces that are supposed to contain titanium or these um, power balance bracelets, these silicone bands that have a, a hologram on them that are supposed to regulate your energy. Right, but 200 million, I mean, is that really enough to get the FDA involved? Well, the FDA has said that you can't make claims about a product providing a benefit to your health or changing the state of your body without going through studies and FDA approval. So when we talked to the FDA about this, they said that some of these claims the companies are making are indeed misleading and they're going to ha you know, it's now up to them to decide if they want to take action and review it. it. It will be difficult to tell, but the FDA has stepped in on the past in these sort of things. I mean, if the FDA were to actually take action, Shannon, I mean, wouldn't they have to take action on a lot of other sort of, you know, voodoo treatments that you <laughs> right. hear about, uh, that, that, that people swear by, you know, you have your, whatever your neighbor tells you about them um, or, your, or your friend. I mean, you know, the FDA is going to have to start looking at all of them. Well, right. You know, the FDA, they have limited resources and they, they do kind of go at these things, uh, you know, one by one as they can. You know, doctors say that, that, you know, this is the equivalent of selling snake oil, someone telling you that a bracelet or a necklace can help improve your balance, your flexibility, your energy flow. Um, but the athletes say, you know, they, they understand that maybe it is just a placebo effect, but if it gives them that edge right. and that most of the game is in their mind, if it helps give them an advantage, they're going to give it a try and they're interested in it. Okay. Uh, Shannon, before I leave you, though, I want to ask you about the uh, Santa Fe Genzyme, uh, you know, bidding war that seems to be uh, coming about. I mean, uh, this hostile bid for Genzyme, I mean, is this something that the CEO uh, has experience with? I mean, what is up with this? Well, yeah, this is kind of interesting coming from a CEO who, you know, really is only in his second year in the job. You know, Chris Viebacher, the CEO of Sanofi, uh, he came from Glaxo, where he was the head of U.S. pharmaceuticals. He's been two years at Sanofi. He, he spent a lot of time restructuring, sort of getting the ship in shape, and now he is making a big move. Sanofi has a history of doing hostile deals like this, and actually, um, if this Genzyme deal goes through, it will be the biggest hostile deal since the deal that created Sanofi and Aventus. So there is a history of this for Sanofi, um, but now it is back in shareholders of Genzyme's court, you know, to decide whether they want to tender these offers, uh, these shares for this offer, and it goes back to Genzyme management to say, well, maybe now right. we should seriously consider letting Sanofi in the door, opening our books to them and starting to do due diligence, which they have been resistant to do up until this point.